G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video, I'm gonna show you our new walk-in, movable, portable duck tractor. I'm calling it the Donald Tractor, named after Donald Duck. You thought I was gonna say Donald Trump, didn't you? Anyway, let's get into it. These fellas have been in this spot now for two days and I think that's enough. After a couple of days, they get enough poop around on the grass and they eat the grass down. They also eat all the weeds down. It's time to move it in a new spot. Otherwise, of course, it gets yucky. About the only hassle there is, if you can call it that, is moving out the feeder and also the water. Before I can move it, I just tip the water out goes into the lawn and also this mucky and manure mixed water is great for the fruit trees. That's about it. I think a bit down there, yeah, that's it. And I'm gonna move them down there on this side of the banana trees between the mulberry and the pawpaws. I think that's a good spot for them. A little bit of morning shade and also you've got a number of fruit trees around them so that they can fertilize them. Pull him up here. I think about there should have it. Let's just see if I push it in this here and then get him into spot. Push it in there, nice and shady. Yeah, I think that'll work. Might just pull this around a bit. Square it up. And that'll do. I'll just wind them down consecutively just so that takes the pressure off it a little bit. I'm still working this design out. I had a little bit of movement in the post on this one. Bit of a teething problem. That's fine. Just need to tighten up these bolts on this on this post, that's all. Okay, that's that one fully down. The other one fully down. Now I'll just fill up their drinker and that should be that. It's cool. Lovely. Okay, I can let them out. I'm sure they'll be happy to get out and have a feed. Settle down. Dear, they're flighty buggers, aren't they? Ducks. <laughs> I've hardly ever had ducks that aren't scared of me. But anyway, what can you do? I guess if you cuddle them every day for hours, you probably get them tame, but you know. Not, well we've had the, the odd duck that's been okay, but most of the time, any ducks we've ever had have been really flighty. I think they're born like that. 
Now in an earlier video I asked for your advice and I want to thank you for sending me and also writing in the comment section your ideas on how I should build this duck tractor. It was through all of that advice and ideas that I formulated my own plan on how best to build this. So let me just take you through the whole build and show you what I've done and how I've made it. First of all, the cage here, it's off the shelf, galvanized dog kennel, and it is actually a pretty strong structure. And then what I added to this was a roof, and this is good quality galvanized chicken wire on top. I just simply wired that to the top and then zip tied it on in places as well. And just to give the roof a little bit of structure so that it wouldn't hang down, I put in these old steel plastic coated garden stakes across the top. They're lightweight, so they didn't add to the weight too much overall. But I should say the reason reason why in the first place I decided to get a dog kennel like this was because you don't see a lot of purpose-built duck tractors. You see a lot of chicken tractors and they're fine. The problem with them is that it's hard to get in there and get access. I like our ducks to have a bit of a pond. I know you could just use buckets. I just think that they enjoy being able to get in, even if it's a bit of a quick dunk in something shallow like a kiddie pool, to be able to have a bit of a play, cool off, and have a bit of a wash. And so to get that kind of setup, I needed to have something that was easier for me to access. And that was a walk-in kennel type structure. But then I also wanted it to be able to be portable. So how do you do that? Where do you get it? Would have been happy to buy one off the shelf. But I looked high and low for good structures or even a chicken tractor that I could turn into a duck tractor. And I couldn't find anything appropriate. What I like about the kennel is that it's nice and long. So it gives plenty of space or enough space. But it's also thin. It's only about a metre and a half wide. And I like that it's thin because it's easier for me to maneuver plus I can get it in between tighter areas like between trees in the orchard because the whole idea of this being mobile is ducks make a lot of mess they poop everywhere and their water is gets all smelly and yucky but it's all good fertilizer for fruit trees so the idea is to move this every few days to another spot on the property around fruit trees in an orchard is a perfect example. And if I can squeeze that into different places where I can, that's just going to fertilize the ground. And at the same time, they're having a bit of fun they're getting a new patch of ground every day. They're safe from predators. So that's why I wanted that type of structure. The problem I had initially was where do you put the ducks through the night? I don't have to worry about dogs or foxes trying to dig in there through the daytime. But I was concerned, of course, about birds of prey. So that's why I put the mesh over the top and also snakes through the night time. I had been using an old guinea pig tractor. That was pretty cumbersome because you had to move the ducks from the run into the shelter every night. And that was a bit of a pain. And then you had two structures to move. So I wanted to find a solution where I could combine the two. And I was able to do that by putting in this shelter here. This is an old shelter that I had. Absco asked me if I could build a shed or trial this little chicken shed for them. It's meant for chickens, but it wasn't that well designed for chickens, I didn't think. And I did trial it and I gave them feedback and I told them that for a mini chicken shed, I thought it could be better used for other things. Well, I had this extra thing that I didn't really need because I didn't buy it for a purpose. It was given to me to trial and put together and then give a company some feedback on. So what was I to do with it? So I stuck it down in the chicken duck run, the male and female apple yards that I've got. Maybe they might just go in there and use it like their little home and nest in there but they ended up just nesting in with the hens so this was just sitting there vacant I thought well maybe it might fit in here and it actually did I measured it out and it came out that it was just a few inches wider and I knew that if I could force the thing in it would push out the side slightly but it'd make no difference it'd fit in there nice and snug all I had to do was put a base on it I made a base out of old wooden decking boards cut them the size made a floor for the thing screwed the structure onto the floor. Before I did that, I did get the wheels. These are just 
jockey wheels, meant for trailers or boats. They're heavy duty ones and they've got the side wind. And that was a pretty easy thing to do. I just used some U-bolts and they actually work very good. Sure, it takes a little bit of extra time to wind one and then go and wind the other till you've got it to a certain height, you know, six to eight inches off the ground. And then it actually maneuvers this thing around quite well. There are a few issues with the wheels. Like if you get really soft and grassy ground, the wheels can dig in sometimes and be a little hard to move it. But there's not a lot I can do about that. And to pull and move it around, I just use one of those trolley jacks at the front. I'm gonna get another one, just a cheap one from Bunnings. The ones that I, one I use now has the hard wheels on it. I'm gonna get some with some pneumatic tires that might be a little bit easier to pull around. And I'll have that purposefully left with this the whole time and the other one can go back in the shed. I'm pretty happy with the way the thing works because this isn't a light structure. Probably weighs a good 120, 130 kilos or more. One thing I did have a bit of a brain failure with was when I tried to put that hut inside the pen. I don't know why, but I fair dinkum could not think of a proper way to get that in there. Initially, I thought I could just put the cage over the top and then maneuver it around but I eventually figured out a way to do it and that was to put the cage on its side and then work it bit by bit. Once I got it snugly fit in there I used a bit of wire to secure the front and wind it in so that the galvanized bars underneath wouldn't pull away ever and of course I tied it in with galvanized wire. This thing's secured in there for good that's for sure. So that was the duck run. Now I want to put this into perspective. I know that I'm not the best craftsman out there. I'm not the best builder or DIY guy. And I know that plenty of you guys out there would be able to do a much better job than I do. And if you like this idea of a duck tractor, besides giving the video a big thumbs up, which I hope you do, you can also just grab some of the ideas or the concept and create your own. I think ducks can be a bit of a challenging bird to keep because a lot of people know that they're a bit stinky and a bit messy, but this is a good way to be able to kill <laughs> two birds with one stone, and what a terrible pun, and be able to give the ducks a good life whilst at the same time fertilise an orchard or simply move it around your property and fertilise the lawn if that's what you want to do. And to finish this video off, I have something really special that I'd like to share with you. And I think many of you already know, because if you follow me for any length of time, or even over the last few days, you would realize that I've reached the big 1 million subscribers. How fantastic is that? I mean, really, like I said in my posts and yesterday, I mean, I've got to pinch myself every day I mean, not just for reaching the 1 million, but for all the support from you guys and all the subscribers that have been sort of pumping into my channel over the last couple of years. If you followed me for any length of time, you'd know that I was very close to giving up YouTube, not because that I didn't like it or I felt it too hard or anything. I actually love doing YouTube. I love making videos. I love being creative. I love the combination of making videos. It's a bit like art to me. Uh, I know a lot of my art isn't that great, but you know what I mean. It's, it's creative for me and I enjoy it so much. And imagine that you're combining your love of self-sufficiency, growing things in the garden and that excitement that it brings and the stress relief it gives me and all those many benefits, how good it is for kids and your family. And that's part of it, especially the children. And I was going to have to give it away, not because I didn't like doing it, it was because I really had to for economics and just practicality. Essentially, like I said, the kids, you know, they're a big part of it. And the reason why I left the workforce 12 years ago was to become a home dad, was the sole purpose to give them a good, uh, stable home life. We, you know, we robbed Peter and paid Paul to get by. So money-wise, 
it wasn't easy dropping down to one income and I've told this story many times so I'm not going to go into it too much you can you know research and if you really want to know that full story um, and and find that out but the bottom line is that I was at a point now where I had to really that the boys are old enough I had to really get back into the workforce because you couldn't really justify staying at home. The boys are pretty settled. They could do without me being at home. It's always nice to have a parent home, even with older teenagers coming back from school, sit down, discuss things. It's always nice to have one foot on the ground, someone at home to organize the household, get dinner on the table, pay bills, and all that type of stuff, if you can do it. But in a modern world, usually both parents and both pe both adults in a household need to work don't they and there was no difference here it was unrealistic for me to think that I could just stay at home and uh, sort of you know do what I've been doing for the last 12 years it was more beneficial for my family to get back into the workforce but what was I to do you know over 50 um, no skills, well, I had skills, I had plenty of skills, or I still do, but no real um, ticket skills that I could transfer straight into Civvy Street. I mean, I'd been out of the workforce for 12 years, so people, employ, employers are reluctant to hire, especially older people or older employees into, into into the workforce because you know the, it's risky for a, many reasons plus I've got obvious injuries um, and my ex-military service doesn't go down too well these days either in Australia anyway employers tend to shy away from ex-military personnel which is you know it's troublesome and, it's a, and that's a separate issue but having all these things really going against me so you can understand how thrilled I am that I don't have to do that, that I can stay at home, that I can still be with my family, that I can still be, even though my kids are old enough, that I can still be home when they get home from school and I can have all that extra spare time with them. Yes, I'm extremely busy here trying to do the home dad stuff and work full time for you guys creating videos and everything that goes with that behind the scenes which is all heaps of fun work uh, but it's work nevertheless it can be very very long days um, I'm talking sometimes almost no sleep in 24 hours to get videos out and to do things but that's not because I'm punishing myself it's because I get carried away and I enjoy it so much and I've got all lots of other things to do you know, not just creating the videos, but working in the yard and taking care of the place. Um, so I'm just saying that I'm having so much fun, I just don't have enough time in the day to get everything done. And so that's the only reason I'm really busy and I push it sometimes. But you can imagine how thrilled I am that I don't have to go out and work for someone else now because of the million subscribers, but not just that the extra support, the viewership on my videos, people taking an interest in me and, and, and having my back. And my supporters on Patreon, for example, 330 or so supporters there. So that there's so many of you out there helping in so many different ways. If it's not monetarily, it's by sharing my videos, it's thumbing up, it's commenting on the videos, it, it's that massive support that has helped me be able to etch a career now out of creating content online. And I, I, it's hard to explain, you know, without going overly stupid and crazy, uh, it's hard to sort of convey how terrific that, that is for me, how sort of almost life-saving and changing it is for me and my family that I have this avenue. So I feel very fortunate and very lucky. And I went from having, you know, looking at and planning to move away from something that I love doing to being able to do it and have my cake and eat it. And I think I'm very fortunate. 
and it's all thanks to you. Thank you very much for my million subscribers. And now I want to just give a small little bit back. And that small little bit back is a t-shirt competition that I want to run. And it's pretty simple. If you're listening to this right now, I want you to, and if you'd like to win a t-shirt or quite frankly, not just a t-shirt, let's make it any type of apparel. Let's make it any, anything really, um, but it's one thing. Uh, say if you wanted a hoodie, say if you're over in the States and it's cold and you're, you're thinking maybe it's hoodie season and, and you know, coming into winter and it's, it's t-shirt season's out, well, I'm happy to go the hoodie even though that's more expensive, I don't care. Whatever you want to choose. So it's a t-shirt, it's a hoodie. I'd probably not go anything of the small stuff like a face mask or something like that. I reckon uh, it's not, not worth that. But anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. Uh, let, let's, let's talk about the competition itself. So it's, uh, I'm going to select 10 people to win a t-shirt or whatever you want to choose. And the only thing you have to do is, first of all, you have to accept that I'm going to know your address. So if you're not happy with knowing that, because I've got to post you this thing. So it's going to be a piece of merch from my Teespring store my Teespring store. I've got a spread shirt and a Teespring shop, but this is be from my Teespring because that's linked to my YouTube channel. So I'll be sending that, I'll be actually getting that from my Teespring store and sending that or posting it to you through that mechanism. So I'll need to know your address. So if you're not comfortable with me knowing your address, you're gonna have to not enter this competition. And the way we'll run it is, I simply want you to make a comment down below and all you have to do is comment on or make your best or worst dad joke you possibly can. And it's got to be about gardening or self-sufficiency. That's the only proviso. So your best or worst dad joke, just make it up. It doesn't have to be anything special. Um, it, it, it can be as bad as mine. And Write that in a comment below. I will go through, probably with Nina, we'll both go through, we'll give it seven days. After seven days, that'll be the cutoff. We'll go through and find all the dad jokes, and then we'll, we'll read them and have a laugh, of course. Get all the dad jokes together, all the usernames, and we'll put all those usernames into a hat, and we'll draw the winner out of that hat of 10. And we'll draw 10 out and after that I will notify you back and I'll reply to your comment, those who won. Incidentally, I'll be doing the hat drawing on my other channel, Self Sufficient Me Too. I won't be putting it on this channel, I'll be doing it on my sub channel, Self Sufficient Me Too. I'll do the hat draw there in a special video, won't be too long. And then I'll probably give more information in that video. And then what we'll do is we will, I will notify you in the comment section and let you know where we can go from there. So essentially you'd then have to email me and we'll back and forwards on the actual prize you want, the size and all that type of pull. So that's how we'll run it. Let's see how we go. As a recap, all you have to do if you want to win a t-shirt or a hoodie or another piece of merch from my Teespring shop is write your best or worst dad joke in the comments section below in this video. And we'll give it seven days, chop that there, and then we'll announce the winners in a video on my second channel, Self Sufficient Me Too. Sounds simple, what could go wrong? <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like I said, thumbs up, share the video around, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Add to that one million. I just can't believe it as I'm standing here talking to you. I know I've waffled on a lot in this video. I just wanted to keep it real and have a bit of a chat. I felt like I needed to without too much editing. So anyway, cheers. Bye for now.